Welcome back everyone to this lesson of, uh, about the basics of finite element analysis. Uh, in this video, we will be talking about how to assemble the structure equations using the element equations. The element equations were derived in the previous video. We showed how we can obtain the stiffness matrix and the generalized force vectors for each element. Now we, were going to, we are going to use this to create uh, a system of equations that present the whole domain, the whole structure, the whole problem that we are dealing with. First, let's uh, just focus on a simple uh, domain that can be divided into two elements. Uh, the first element extends from point one of node one to node two. The second element is connected to it at node two and it extends to node uh, three. Uh, now, uh, what we have is two element equations, each presenting uh, one of the elements. Of course, uh, it, they can be different if the properties of a, either of the elements is different. But for again, for the sake of simplicity, we will be talking about an element that, uh, uh, sorry, uh, we will be talking about that the two elements are identical. Thus, the equations uh, of, uh, of these two elements will be uh, will look like this. Uh, remember here that L represents the length of the element, not the length of the whole domain. So if the whole domain has a length of L, this L element will be replaced by L over 2, for example. Uh, now, uh, you can see from the equation of the first element that it covers, uh, it, uh, it contains U1 and U2 while the equation of the second element contains u2 and u3. So u2 is common. Also, we have p2 divided between the two elements, p2 one here and p2 two. We don't know how much of p2 is carried by element one or how much of p2 is carried by element two. However, we know that the, uh, the summation of these two parts will have to be equal to the input force p2 that we have here. If we expand the, uh, the set of equations, we will get uh, four equations. These four equations uh, will uh, look like this. Uh, now we need to have something that we know. Uh, uh, P1 is known. It's all here, only on element number one. P3 also is known here. However, we have an extra uh, unknown here, uh, actually two unknowns, uh, P21 and P22. If we add those two equations, we will get P21 and P22 added together to obtain P2. Uh, so we reduce the number of equations that we have from 4 to 3. Also, you can see here that the part containing U2 and, uh, got added from both elements uh, uh, to obtain a set of uh, equations that can be presented in matrix form like this. Uh, you can uh, see that it's as if I added two elements, the two matrices, one minus one minus one one, and the other one one minus one minus one one on the diagonal. So I'm adding here, uh, putting this one, and then adding to the other one. That's why it two appears here which can be extended further. If we had the third element, then we will have another element here with a two, one plus one, and then the rest, and so on. Uh, this is uh, basically what we call the assembled set of equations. This equation presents the whole structure that we have here. The parts uh, that's coming from the, uh, uh, the extended, sorry, the externally applied or the distributed force appears here. Uh, the, this first part coming from the first element and the blue part coming from the second element. Now that we have the set of equations that describe the behavior of the whole structure, uh, we need to apply the boundary conditions. Up to this moment, what we all what we did is focusing on the uh, element, the properties of the element, and the forces applied on uh, the element. However, we cannot really solve the problem now because we don't know whether the uh, structure is constrained or not. Uh, maybe from this side, or 
this side or from both sides. So we will need to uh, apply these boundary conditions and uh, get to solve uh, the problem to see uh, how it works. 